of the NFL season wraps up this evening with the Dolphins and the Rams. I know all Dolphins fans are super excited to be on primetime against a Rams team that could go on and still do something special, which is kind of the story of what's happening in the NFL right now. Now, there are certainly some teams where their fans have already mailed it in and started thinking about the draft, and every week that passes uh, certainly cements that case. But then there are some teams that are making some runs right now. There are some teams that are winning some games. There was a hard count that won a game for a team. There was a blocked field goal that won a game for a team, and you're talking about some magical stuff. One team had five interceptions and still won. What does that happen? Football is the greatest. We'll obviously chit-chatted about it all single day. We'll have Adam Schefter joining us in about 20 minutes. Bill Belichick will join us, and then Jim Harbaugh, the head coach of the Chargers. Don't look now. Yep. Mm -hmm. They play a style of football that wins. And they are winning. Jim Harbaugh will join us in uh, two hours, 205 Eastern. We're lucky to be doing this. We can't thank you enough for watching. The Talks and Tables here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. Comments. I mean, you're obviously grinning like the butcher's dog <laughs> because on. of Drake May, but football is fantastic right now. Yeah, uh, unbelievable. You, you just mentioned it, too. Some of the games coming down to the wire, the 1 o'clock slate was great, the 4 o'clock slate. I mean, you, you, there could be some adjustments made. but Three uh, games. All of them stink. That's yeah, tough. Uh, all of them very terrible, but still some some great teams playing. The Philadelphia Eagles still winning games, even though everybody still hates Nick Sirianni. And then you mentioned it. The Steelers. I mean, that that felt like the game of the week almost. And then, of course, the Detroit Lions on Jake Bates's leg to end that game by by an inch. One half of the hammer. Don Cowboys. AP tone. Boston Connor just chit chatted about Pittsburgh Steelers are seven and two right now. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. And the Pittsburgh Steelers made a bunch of moves this offseason to add to this particular team. Obviously, they bring in Justin Fields and Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson's playing just fine. Mike Tomlin made the decision to go to Mister Unlimited in the middle of the season after they had already won some games. Justin Fields is playing A-OK. The city loved Justin Fields. The locker room seemingly loved Justin Fields. And uh, Mike Tomlin says, you know, the enemy of uh, great is good. We're good right now. We're trying to be great. They seemingly are getting to that point. Obviously, Russell Wilson's able to do some things that nobody else in the history of football is able to do. His deep balls come down from the clouds. Yep. They land like a Harrier plane mm-hmm. into the arms. Mike Williams is a the guy they trade for literally just last week from the New York Jets. He gets a Game-winning touchdown. Mm-hmm. Preston Smith, defensive lineman brought in from the Green Bay Packers. He makes a massive play in the fourth quarter. Everything that the Pittsburgh Steelers have done to add to this team is seemingly working, and they get a huge win over a Washington Commanders team who certainly could have won that. They get the ball after this. Mm-hmm. They end up getting by three inches short on a first down with Zach Ertz completion. Mm-hmm. Pittsburgh Steelers get a big-time win. Tone Diggs, you got to feel as if you guys could go. The Pittsburgh Steelers, real deal this year, it feels like. And the reason is... That dangerous son of a bitch, Russell Wilson. Truly. He's having team meetings on the offensive side every single Thursday night. Picks up all the meals, all the tabs. Said, boys, this one's on me. He said uh, to Mike Florio, I believe the NBC crew, he said, a lot of people talk about like the positive stuff and how it got to be fake. I believe in this. This is literally what I believe. So whenever you hear me say, uh, clear eyes, full hearts, we can't lose on the sideline, I mean that. Mm-hmm. Whenever we're down in the fourth quarter and I'm your quarterback, I firmly believe that we're very much in this thing. I'm going to make some mistakes. You're going to make some mistakes. We're going to make some mistakes. We're going to have a fake punt early. It's potentially going to put us behind the eight mm-hmm. ball. Who cares? We're going to come back and make big plays. George Pickens mm-hmm. is playing his absolute best ball. Pat Fryermuth is playing his best ball. Austin is playing his best ball. The offensive line seemingly blocking better. And you got Nosh. Uh-huh. And Warren uh-huh. needs right. to hold on to the rock, running the ball all over the place. This Pittsburgh Steelers team's for real, and I think they have what it takes to win late, too, Tone, which I assume got you all zeked up in the pants. Very, very zeked up. You can start with <laughs> Mr. Unlimited, okay? He can do no wrong right now. He is our king. He is our champion. He is our lord and savior. We will follow him. Jeez. And, what? Sorry, go on. If you're the quarterback of the Pittsburgh Steelers, you're winning football games like he is and playing like he is, he is our Lord and Savior, okay? Seven was our Lord and Savior for a long time. Now it's three, okay? Mr. Unlimited Three is doing it all. And he's just been, like, delivering on so many big plays with him and George Pickens and now Mike Williams with that huge catch. And, like, the offense was okay um, with Justin Fields, but it felt like it has the last few years when the record was still fine, but you knew in the back of your head there was no chance that they were going to win any playoff games. Completely different this year. It feels like they could win. The offense is moving. The offense is scoring. The defense shut down the commander's run game last year. That, yesterday was a play of – or was a day of big plays. Like, there was big plays by both offenses. Um, it was awesome. The defense was was awesome against the run. Like, that. 
We're going to do it. Yeah, I think there is a chance you guys do it. And obviously, your special teams coordinator, Danny Smith, is all pissed off about the fake not working. But then they get a muff on a punt, get the ball back in the plus side. So it's like special teams is great, even though this particular fake not the best. So, you know, uh, this could have been a check live at the time because corner comes in uh, to rush the punter. So they could have checked that thing at the – like, look, he comes in. Bang, we got a guy wide open. Pause it right there, Foxy. All right, so – that guy's wide open. Ugh, they practice it. In football, you got a guy who's wide open. Can we put it back here, please? So whenever – is this thing on? This thing on? Okay, so we're, we're professional athletes here. We're adults in the United States of America. And what we've learned on Saturdays from college game day is that Americans stink at kicking balls. Yep. Okay, that's because they don't grow up doing it as much as maybe other places. You should be able to play – Pitch and catch. So as soon as old buddy comes down, this guy's wide ass open. Wide ass open. Look at the space. Look at the opportunity. All we need is play catch. That's all we need to do. Now you're backed up. You're on the 15-yard line, 16-yard line. So if it's an incomplete, you're a nightmare. But you're not thinking about an incomplete. You know why? Professional athletes. Play it. Check it. Snap it. Wide open. Look for the ball. It's coming. Oh, no. Man. It's tough. That's tough. Brutal. I've been, I've been, yeah. mm. Thank you, D. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, I, I've been a part of something very similar uh, to this in the past, and it was against the Dallas Cowboys in Jerry World. Uh, it was in the first quarter. We were backed up, and uh, the Dallas Cowboys would then go on to score 55 <laughs> points <laughs> yeah, against okay. the Indianapolis Colts. Pittsburgh Steelers did not fold. They stepped right back up, and Danny Smith obviously, oh, wait, it was wide open. It was wide open. We had another one. We had another one. Damn, 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 damn. Oh, my God. How do we going to get how, how do we drop that ball? We practiced it a thousand times. Same thing that happened for us at the Colts, but – that's a situation that the Steelers this year would have normally yeah. converted on. Good things would have happened. Instead, it goes bad. How do they respond in a great way? The Steelers are the real deal. Nine-year NFL vet, Darius J. Butler is here. Good to see you. Thank you much. d Butch, there's two teams we need to talk about. All right. You want to start uh, in the NFC or the AFC? Let's start uh, NFC. Okay, NFC. Detroit Lions. Jared Goff throws five interceptions. Man, five. five. One of them gets in a Hail Mary. Mm -hmm. So you kind of yeah. yeah, jot that off at halftime. He didn't make it to the end zone. <laughs> right. And it was a <laughs> and it was an interception. You're talking about worst stats, worst stats. Jared Goff has five interceptions. Now, the Houston Texans did take advantage of a few of them in scoring. Houston Texans, who lead the AFC South, obviously, have an opportunity to go do something special. In C.J. Stroud's second year, he's going to learn. He's going to evolve. They trade for Stephon Diggs. They make some other moves. Well, Stephon gets hurt. Nico Collins has been out. They haven't been able to protect CJ. But in a game against the Lions, who are a team everybody thinks is going to be around the end, the Houston Texans were back. That place was sold out, filled up. Houston Texans football. Ah, uh ah. -uh. This Detroit Lions win whenever they're not supposed to win. Mm -hmm. This is the difference between the Detroit Lions now versus the Detroit Lions. But you see that pick? That's Jared Goof stuff. Yeah. That's not Jared Goff stuff. That's Jared Goof stuff. Back whenever he was at the end of his run with the Rams, that's what the Detroit Lions used to look like. And they used to crumble. They used to fold. Uh-uh. 23-13, let's give the ball to Amon Ron St. Brown, who obviously made plays all over the place. Get this thing to 23-20. Then Jared Goff hands it off to one of their incredible backs of Jameer Gibbs. He's eating. Mm -hmm. He's going crazy. And once you started just sensing a little bit of momentum going their way, the UFL superstar Jake Bates Oof. buries a 58-yarder to tie that thing. Now, Kaimi Fairbairn would have an opportunity to answer at 58 yards. He's been money from 50-plus. He pulls this one. What's that mean? Well, the Lions get the ball at 48 right there. And if you see the way Jake Bates kicks, you get a couple first downs. What's that mean? You're going to get another opportunity at it. Again, Amon Ross St. Brown. Jake Bates, 52-yarder! Oh, Old Lions, that ball hits the upright, comes out. Oh, yeah. Brand new, new Lions. Lions. That ball drifts inside the upright. It's like this Lions team's doing things that we could have never expected if you're a Lions fan about 10 years ago. And also, it feels like football gods are a little bit on their side, yeah. D-Budge. This is back-to-back -back weeks now. Now, they're 8-1, so they've been winning all year. But this is back-to-back -back weeks where they won kind of ugly games in different ways. And that's what you got to do if you're a good team. Second half, obviously CJ Stroud a good first half. Second half, defense comes out, basically pitches a shutout. You know, a couple, turn uh, CJ Stroud over a couple times. That's what you got to have with a good football team, complimentary football. If the offense isn't, you know, putting 40 points on the board, your defense shows up. Defense giving up some points, your offense can put up 40 at any point in time. So this team, I mean, they kind of look like destined, kind of like probably the other team we're going to talk about 
on the, any other conference. And who's that? Uh, the AFC, probably the Chiefs, still been the Chiefs. Flag, Chiefs is still the Chiefs. How'd they win the game yesterday? Go ahead. Uh, let's take some guesses. I assume just Kelsey went ballistic and scored a touchdown. He did score a touchdown, but uh, no, that's not how they won it. Ty, how nah, it was Mahomes magic late in the game. Oh, you thought he cooked a little bit? Yeah. Maybe mm-hmm. rolled his ankle, got back? Yep. I mean, he kind of did, but no, that wasn't a ton. What do you think? That defense against a rookie quarterback, I assume a shutout? Uh, no, actually did give up some points. Huh. Uh, Jeez. Yeah, and the rookie quarterback not bad. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, he's actually pretty good. D Butts. Probably what you- rookie. Xavier Worthy probably got hot. Probably Ooh. three touchdowns. No, I understand how you would think that. But mm. That wasn't good. Andy no. Reid also. I, I know some people. D Hop oh, yeah. scored three touchdowns. Oh, yeah. No, no, he didn't. Some people are thinking Andy Reid maybe wanted in running back, goal line. Yep. Sure. No, mm-hmm. That wasn't. Pacheco came back? No, no. Uh, they blocked the field goal. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, they blocked Come the field goal. Come on. Yeah, they blocked the field goal away. Boom! Leo. Chanel, yeah. who they call John Cena. They say this guy is the strength of a D lineman, plays linebacker. He's an absolute stud. Will Lutz is a great kicker. Bo Nix, we think, is going to be a great quarterback. But what we think is uh, what they got going on in their field goal protection is, uh, I don't want to say stupid, but certainly left them wide open for somebody to take advantage of. And Dan Orlovsky did a nice piece on this on GetUp, so I appreciate him kind of zooming in on the finer things in this entirety. But if you look at number 54 there, he's the left end. Okay, so as you uh, – can we put it back up here, please? So as you look at this thing here, okay, so here's wing. Okay, he has one, eyes on one coming here. This guy, Alex Forsythe, he's the end. Okay, so you're supposed to pivot, bang, bang, eyes to two, eyes to two. Foot in ground, open this gate up so you two can kind of interlock to lock out one and two. Then you got the uh, then you got the tackle, obviously taking three. Guard just kind of eating it up the middle and then bomb, 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 bomb. Play that thing. Pause that thing. This guy doesn't even get his other foot in here. Go back, please, to the beginning of this play. Uh, what? <laughs> this guy's doing great. <laughs> play. Pause. Play. Pause. This guy doesn't even get his head up, okay? This dude has Ooh. the worst technique I've ever seen from somebody playing in this position. Squatting on heels, doesn't even lift up his head. It was the story of the entire game. Dan Orlovsky broke it down great on get-up, so I'm not going to dive all the way back into it. And I would assume it's a story of the season with this guy. I think there was a couple games he was the starting center. I think he's still listed as the starting center, but he's been on the field goal team the entire season. Having him be on the field side, okay? So this is on the right hash. So the upright's over here. So science tells you this ball's going to have to go this way to go through the uprights. So the crew that is on this side, and I don't know how many they pick up and flip, but the field side group is your group. This has got to be sound. This guy does not deserve to be on a field side of any field goal team that I've ever seen (laughs) in my entire life. I have no idea how they've gotten away with it this long. This guy just gets his ass sent. Sent. Now, these people are going to fall. There's a chance you're going to fall. Die slowly, though. Leo keeps his feet, battles through, explodes through the ball. It is picture-perfect technique, and it's taking advantage of a fish that they certainly knew. I don't know if coming into the game they knew the 54 is the fish because early they weren't attacking them as much, and then about the second kick, they started like giving a little shove. Third one, they're like, wait a minute, hold on, we got this guy. 54, if he goes back out there for the rest of the season, he's going to get this type of treatment. That's the way it works on field goal block, but whenever you talk about perfect execution and paying attention to the details in the biggest moments, that is this Kansas City Chiefs team. So whenever I put out a tweet that the Chiefs is still the Chiefs. And everybody goes, they got lucky, they got lucky. It's like, no. The amount of work that they put in on the tiny things. And then also strategically finding out we can get through this guy and then having the confidence that you can go get it, which Chabal definitely had to have to sell out completely. It's like that's perfect execution in a massive moment from your third phase, which matters. Everybody talks about Spagnola's defense being great. Everybody talks about Patrick Mahomes being awesome. Special teams here, you can tell they work their asses off in those yeah. periods because those types of step jump is all routine. That's all muscle memory. That's not something you just drop in on a Sunday and say, hey, this is what we need you to do. Run through Buddy's chest and then need to get your hands up on the ball. That's practice. That's worked. That's accountability. That's details. And that's why they're the only undefeated team. And that's why they were this close to losing, but they don't. Two teams now, Chiefs and Lions, are winning. 
when they're not supposed to. And everybody wonders why, 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 why. The Chiefs, obviously, if they're just able to uh, get the toe in for Isaiah Likely, remember, we all remember that yep. uh, in the opener, they win. How about when the Bengals just outgained them and then they also lost the turnover battle? How about the missed P.I. call against Atlanta? How about the win in overtime? How about the field goal block? The Chiefs 9-0. But, 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 but. Always happens to the teams that are good. Yeah. Then the Lions, same exact thing. They get their shit kicked offensively against the Packers. Who cares? How about against the Titans? Same exact thing. Are they going to lose to the Titans? Nah, who cares? They lose. Uh, they get the ball picked off five times against the Texans. They win. Bop, 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 bop. Every time. The winners win. Yeah. And there's reasons. And I think on that field goal block, to a lot of people's uh, points that have played football, it's like their attention to the little things is the reason why they won. Won't get talked about. It'll be considered lucky, but that shit's worked. Just like all this other stuff. It's the much. details, man. It's a fine, very, very fine line between winning and losing in the National Football League. Everybody has good coaches. Everybody's got good players, but it's the small things, and they don't become big things until they become big things. We saw it with the Commanders and the, and the Bears, and it was the Hail Mary, something we practice, we rep every Saturday in the walkthrough before games, but never really show up until it shows up. So Andy Reid, uh, MCDC up in Detroit, they obviously coach the little things. And it's culture, too. It's from the players. The players, we hold each other accountable on good teams to do all the little things throughout the week. And then Sunday, Monday, Thursday, whenever, that I mean, thing show up in a, in a big, big month. Yeah, I don't know how. And on the other side, are. the lack of attention to Deets, I don't know how that guy has been at that position for that long. <laughs> Like, he's a center. Normally, you're going to want somebody that can move a little bit at that position because you got to – literally, the thing is, stick in between old buddy, boom, and then you're just looking for two. And then old buddy here is bang, pow, looking for one. Yeah. So his, his right thigh and your boom are locking that whole thing down, and you're going to fall. Just need your ass to fall slow. What, yeah, body, what body types are you using? Because I'm not used to a center Move. being yeah, out that wide away from the ball. Like usually they're closer in. Usually they're tight end. I've seen D end. Tight end tackle, seen... backup tackle. Maybe like the D end. Yeah. Definitely somebody that's put backup D end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like those are because you – I don't know. I don't, that, that dude didn't even get his head up no. and didn't even move his feet Tough. before he was already – it was like, wow, how have they been getting away with – how has this guy been getting away? I don't know. He's not going to anymore. Yeah, I, mean, no I mean, Alex Forsyth now has a massive circle. Hey, they got that laser on him wherever now. the hell 54 is, uh -huh. we're going, even if he's on the short side of the field yep. over here, we are going to try to get through him. I don't know how they made it this far without showing up in the Denver Broncos. With that being said, when Bo Nix needed to make a drive, yeah. mm -hmm. he did against yeah. the Kansas City Chiefs. Whenever the Broncos needed to make some plays, they certainly did. They're obviously, I'd say – that close to beating <laughs> yeah, the Kansas truly. City Chiefs. Yeah. You're a Broncos fan. I think you should be excited about what mm -hmm. they're building over there. This with a $43 million cap hit this year, yeah. mm -hmm. I think. So, mm -hmm. obviously, they can get going. But the Chiefs winning this way, I think a lot of people go, oh, wow, that's bullshit. It's like, no. Actually, it's the complete opposite. It's like the, the amount of work that goes into all of this is something that you would never really get to reap the benefit of. How many block kicks are there a year? A handful. Yeah. Now, this one's to win a game, though. So whenever you need it in the biggest moment, they're able to rely on their technique that they work. It's like that says something about the whole team, not just that particular play. Well, it's also surprising, too, just because Sean Payton. Like, you would think Sean Payton is one of those guys who would be very, very meticulous when it comes to things like this. I mean, two years ago, before the Super Bowl, when it was Chiefs-Eagles, he actually told us, like, hey, there's going to be a massive special teams play tomorrow or Sunday night, and that's going to change the entire game. And then Kadarius Tony had that return, so it is surprising. But to your guys' point, how simple is it to just plug and play somebody now? Like, are they just going to, hey, all right, we need somebody that can just quickly move their feet, bigger guy, or is this something that might actually linger for the Denver Broncos? Yeah, that is going to be something, uh, if they keep 54 anywhere, it's going to linger. Now, I granted, I, I think he should probably be a little bit towards the middle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because what he's doing, you just drop him over to guard mm -hmm. or over to tackle. He doesn't really have to move much. He just literally just gets slammed. <laughs> I don't know if anybody told him that he was playing where he was playing. That might have been part of the problem. <laughs> okay. He might have not even knew that he was sure. there because, like, he, just not even – that's bad. I mean, basically yeah. ran unimpeded right to the ball. Yeah. Well, the guy ran right through his chest. Yeah. yeah. So, like, at some point, you got to have a little bit of fight in that whole thing. But it is a position where you're going to get killed. I have nothing but respect for all the offensive linemen that do field goals.